Happy Monday, y'all. Hope your weekend was good. Ours was extremely busy with the grands. But Papa and them boys had a ball. And Mama spent many hours in the kitchen. Not as bad as it used to be because this has limited me. But let me tell you, a six-year-old and a 13-year-old, they eat every hour on the hour. You know what I mean? But I want to try something different. I didn't know until Saturday. <laughs> I thought, like, for instance, blog with a B is typing, right? Blogger, I think is what it's called. I got so much to learn, y'all. <laughs> And vlogging, I thought, well, you made a video. Well, that's kind of not fully correct. Vlogging is like, uh, I may be totally wrong, but my now new interpretation is you vlog the day. Not so much doing an instructional video, which I'm assuming that's what I've been doing just by y'all's responses when we cook or when we can. And your responses, by the way, is just incredible. Thanks for the tip. Thanks for showing me how to do this. So it's kind of instructional, but I don't think I've ever done one of the whole day, which I don't miss like four hours <laughs> of the day. Y'all didn't need to see me washing clothes and running a vacuum. But I am going to attempt to vlog, minus the laundry, the floors, and the toilets, okay? We just skipped that part. Yeah, that's not interesting. So I'm going to run the camera if this is what vlogging is, and you're going to see what it's like with Lippy during the day. Well, minus some things that I just cannot do, guys. You know, I can't go fill orders. I have to wait on Mr. Buddy, things like that. But if this goes as my mind says it's going to go, all I ask is for y'all's response. Y'all are going to be kind. You always are. You're all going to laugh with me, not at me. So, hey, that's a good thing, right? But I need y'all's feedback. Am I hitting somewhat of the mark minus some of the things that I'm just not able to do at this moment? or for the next couple of weeks. But let's play this out. So we're gonna start by, I've gotta get my supper going, okay? So we're gonna start there. I'm gonna attempt at planting carrots, but I'm not necessarily using it as an instructional. I'll just tell you and show you how I do it, um, but not like so much slow down. This is why, this is when, this is, you know, how. And let's see if I'm hitting somewhat on the mark of my day with a little bit of changing you know because i'm half i'm half of a hands <laughs> so let's get this vlogging going today is september the 16th 2024 y'all know what i'm doing <laughs> but let's start okay I'm gonna drop the camera because remember, this is our supper and I am using beef. Write that down, y'all know Lippy. I like the oink, not so much the moo, but I'm surprising Mr. Buddy with some moo, as in a chuck roast. Yes, chuck roast and vegetables with some crusty bread, no rice, believe that? No rice, that's because I'm taking the leftovers and we're gonna have sub sandwiches tomorrow evening for supper. You know, I stretch this out. So we're gonna get the chuck roast seasoned and then we'll go to the stove and we're just gonna vlog. Lord, I'm too old for this. <laughs> I don't even know if the lighting's good, but this is just a chuck roast. I am leaving the fat cap on because this is flavor, okay? That's flavor. I'm run out of my clucking good. I do have to get some help to refill it. But I was able to get enough on one side of the clucking good and mash it in. Now, the next ingredient I'm gonna use is my house seasoning, and we call this voodoo dust. I know some people got offended with the name. 
it has really no bad meaning. It's just a dusting that makes magic, if you will. And because both of them have sodium, low sodium here, a little bit more here, but still lower, the combination, I'm not gonna add any salt at this point. I am gonna hit it with some garlic powder. If this was a pork butt, I would poke holes in it and put some fresh cloves of garlic and a little bit of pepper. Now this is coarse ground that I do grind. I'm gonna take this hand and I'm gonna give it a good mashing. And I'm just gonna repeat the other side. Now we're back at the stove. I do have my temp on the stove right at high. I am gonna use my Magnolite Dutch oven. A lot of you have been seeing me pull out a lot of my Magnolite pots. I have four of them and I absolutely love them because these are also oven safe. Now I just put a little bit of avocado oil in the bottom of my pot and we're gonna get this hot, not smoking, but hot. Now that our oil is hot, I'm just gonna put that chuck roast in and hear it sizzle, but we're not going to move it. We need to get a good crust on this. We're sealing in all the goodness inside this roast. So we're gonna let it go two, three minutes and really get a crust on one side. I'll let it go about three minutes. Let's see if it pulls. Oh yeah, it gently pulls. And we're gonna sear the other side. I'm starting to smell it and watch. You see that good flavor getting down here? That's what we want. Now I'm gonna turn it down to about a number six, which is a medium. And we're gonna let it sear again on this side and then I'm gonna show you the steps that I take. This is the only time consuming part of what we call pot roast. Water. Now, I don't know how much to tell you, and I don't know if the screen is going to smoke up, but we're just going to start grazing this pot roast with a little bit of water, a little bit at a time. Oops. Another drop over here. Perfect. That's what I want. Okay. Now we're gonna do this, we could do this eight to 10 times, but you're gonna understand why. This is kind of a smaller chuck roast for this size Dutch oven, but I'm looking at the camera and y'all are really able to get a good visual. That's what I wanted. Okay, I'm starting to see the water evaporate, and I'm starting to see the oil, which is the natural rendering oil from the fat, starting to pull around here. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, we ready to go again. Okay, I'm gonna turn it. Oh yeah. See, we're getting beautiful color down here. That's flavor, y'all. Now that I know I've got a good crispy coating, and you see I don't use flour, I'm gonna go ahead and add more. Only now I'm gonna start venting it until I hear the water stop sizzling and then we will repeat. We're only talking, you know, five, 10 minutes. And the rest of the time, it's gonna cook itself. Now, it's gonna make a little bit of a mess, you know, cause you got that steam coming. I'm gonna try my oven mitt. Okay, I need to turn my uh, my stove top up. I'm gonna go to almost a high because I really want this to steam out fast. 
All right, let's see what it's doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, you could do this step and, I guess, put it in a crock pot. Okay, I think I'm going to be happy once this cooks on out. Remember, venture pot. Can y'all see that? Okay, we're going to set it over on this platter. You see all this goodness? We've got to get that up. Okay, in with all this goodness. This is just a diced onion, largely diced. And it's going to help pull that grimee, that flavor, off the bottom that some of you may think is burnt, but I promise you it's not. As you can see, we've got our onions really colored. They've been going maybe 30 seconds. Now with the water. A little bit at a time. I'm gonna smoke you out, but we're just getting all of that goodness off the bottom, and this is the way to do that. Perfect. Staying on about a high, and I know this is noisy, I am just gonna come in and kind of scrape this as the water is starting to bubble, to boil, because that's going to pull all this up. Now that we've got it all up, this is where you could use beef broth. I am out of my beef base, and normally I don't can beef broth. I can uh, chicken broth. There again, we're not big beef eaters. This is where you would add beef broth instead of water. But you see how we're getting a natural gravy. Can you see that in there? That is a natural gravy. But I'm going to add a little bit more water, not much, because I'm going to add my homemade onion soup mix. I'm going to have to get the package out. And mine is one-fourth cup to a cup of water. So I'm just going to estimate, ooh, i got to make some more. Of course, I know I'm a little bit more than one-fourth cup, but that's good right there. We'll get this blended in, and we're going to add water and put our roast back in. Because this is going to cook down, so I am adding quite a bit of liquid. Now remember, all we've added is water, and then of course that one-fourth cup of my homemade onion soup mix. But you could have added beef broth. You could even add chicken broth, guys. But you could add this, I mean, put this in an oven, I'd say at 325 with the lid on. Now, I'm not leaving all of this. I added a little bit of water just to clean this dish. Perfect. I am going to turn my heat down to a number, well, between one and two. And I'll come check it about every 30 to 45 minutes. It is just going to sit here low and slow. And then in a couple hours, we'll add the potatoes and the carrots where I'm going to opt out for the celery. I just didn't want celery in it, but most times it's just celery, but these are big pieces. So couple hours, but make sure you do come and put your eyes on it because you may need to add a little bit of liquid. Not much, but you definitely want to not dry it out. You don't want to burn up your house. But this is something I can now go and do another task, another chore, and let it just cook low and slow. And this is my way of doing pot roast. <laughs> Got my mat here. Now, I don't know how good of a job I'm gonna do getting all this little bit of weed out of here, but I'm just gonna break it up. Oop, can't get it in that coffee. I'm just gonna break up half before I go to the other side. I think I'm gonna leave the, well, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave the butterfly bush and just get this net off if I can. No way I can uh, dig that up without Buddy's help. 
But I'm just gonna break this up and add some peat moss to it and just see what happens because I really don't need to add any perlite. Look at that. That is beautiful. I just wish I could dig down deeper, but I think we're good. See, I don't think the carrots are gonna be able, are gonna struggle whatsoever. We're going to see how Moe's little shovel does. Whoops. I may have to go get a scooper. Because I can't pick the bag up. This might do okay. What's that old saying? If there's a wheel, there's a way. Whoops. Well, y'all, uh, I'll try to remember to insert a picture, but Mo, the six-year-old, caught his first, what we call big fish, a three-pound bass. <clears throat> it was, uh, it was caught on a little brim hook, and he caught it in the tongue. Now, it was catch and release over at Mr. Larry's Pond. But you want to talk about a happy kid. He was so happy. Oh, he thought he was the big shot. Of course, we were ecstatic too now, let me tell you. But he was tickled pink. And to catch it on a brim hook, he was at the pier, and he told his papa, he says, Oh, I got one. So papa thought, oh, a little brim. You know, maybe a, maybe a small bass. But uh, when that water started turning, Papa said, uh-oh, to himself, he got something. So Papa stood at the pier to make sure it wasn't going to pull him in. And uh, Papa said, I think they didn't even have a net. He said, I just stood there and I was like, uh-oh, I need to help him. And uh, he reached down and grabbed the line, but not hard and got it on up, that ball was tickled. So I'll try and insert a picture in between what we're doing today so y'all can see that beautiful bass that Mo caught. Now, I'm not adding much peat moss, guys. One, I can't get it all in here, but if I can just get a little bit, I'm gonna be happy. All right, let me get a shot of my coffee. Remember, we're doing this bed and the other bed that y'all are actually sitting in. Now, I'm gonna use my garden tone. Y'all know how I am about this. It's higher in phosphorus and potash than it is nitrogen. But after my carrots emerge, I will feed them a little nitrogen. Oop, I don't want that in my coffee. Oh, a little late. Oh, well, it done got cold by now anyway. Boy, this stuff stinks. Yo, it is overcast. There's no wind blowing. We ain't even supposed to have rain, but it just has that, I don't know, it just has that look like it wants to rain, which won't hurt my feelings none. Buddy was able to get the top and one side of the generator shed done. You know, cutting those the tin to fit. And uh, he'll try to do the other side this week after work, he said. And then uh, I guess next weekend we'll start 
doing the dry pour. Let me get a little bit more over there and then I'll walk over there and rub it in. There we go. He doesn't know that I'm doing this. I'm gonna surprise him. I'm trying to get four different carrots in here because I've got just some old burpee seeds that I found. Um, they're scarlets. And then I found these Bolero carrots from Hoss Tool, but here's the Carrada. And of course, this is always what we get from the co-op. These are Danver halves, half longs. So with four, I wanna try and divide this up by four. Just, just to see how they do. And I'm probably gonna put the burpee over here since these could be easily five years old, guys. I don't know. I think I'm gonna put them over there. So I'm going to, there's my line. Yeah, there's my line down the middle. Okay, that's gonna be my middle line. And here we go. All right, let's do this. There's my other line. It's not straight, but it'll let me know where my four spots are. Yeah, that works. All right, I'm gonna work with this side first. And I don't wanna really just scatter. I wanna try to strategically place them because guys, I'm bad about not thinning. I just, it seems like a task that just, I, I don't have there again. It's got to be patience that I don't have. So I think I'm going, since there's my line, I'm just going to kind of score. I'm just going to score like that. Not much. Of course, I'm going to water in after I plant them, and then i got to put my cardboard over it. So I'm thinking like that. So if I want to put those over there, let's do, I want to divide up. Um, this seems, yeah, this is less than over there. So let's do this Hoss Bolera. I have no idea. Uh-oh, let's see if I can even open it one-handed. Yeah, a week ago I was having to use scissors. And I know these are going to be tiny unless they're pelleted, and I don't have a clue. And they are not pelleted. Well, Lippy, because I don't have a hand to use. Hmm. Well, let's see how I'm going to do this. Since I don't have a hand to use. Alright. I'm going to do something. Which is fine. I'm not planning on using the hand that much, so... I told y'all this is what they call vlogging. Just keeping it real of what I do. Y'all want to know how many times I take this thing off and on? Because I don't want to get it... Ouch. I don't want to get it dirty. Oh, let's see. I'm going to set it right here. Okay. I think it's fine there. Let's see if this Hannah... I think it... Yeah, there we go. Lord, where's my line? Oh, right there. Okay. Oh, Lord, Lippy. Oh, it had more seeds than what I thought. We can't start that many. Hang on. I've got way more seeds than what I thought it had. Okay. Get them out of my, ouch. Get them out of my, well, let's do this. Lord. All right, I got to get glasses on because I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, there's my line. Okay. It's going to be time consuming, guys, and I know I'm going to have to do some thinning. But I'm telling myself if I take my time, 
then I won't have so much thinning to do. Lord, help me. Y'all know how many times a day I speak to the Lord. I say, Lord, help me. Isn't it peaceful out here listening to the birds? Oops. Oh, too many right there. I should have just scared them the way I'm moving my finger with them. Okay, we're through with that one. Now, okay, that's my line. All right, so I'm just going to pat them to make the dirt connect. I'm not really burying them. I'm just wanting to pat them in because I got a water. I got both beds done. Now I'll give them a good watering. Right. I had to turn it down, it was too high. Rinse my little pitchfork off. I got the cardboard on it. Now when Buddy gets in, he'll have to help me go get the bricks and then we'll put bricks on it. But I'm gonna go ahead and get it wet down so it don't move. Okay, the hands are clean, and I gotta get Buddy's jeans hung up. But when Bud gets in, he's gonna help me with the, uh, the bricks. Well, he don't know it yet because he don't know that I actually um, planted. Now, I don't have my brace on. I may have to stop and go get my brace. We shall see how this does. Um, anyhow, I'm going to leave the cardboard on um, until I see sprouts. And the first time I'm going to check, see, today's the 16th, Monday. I'll check next Monday and see if I have anything. And as soon as I start seeing sprouts, I'm going to pull the cardboard. And I'm going to keep them moist, not wet, wet, but I'm going to keep them moist. And after two weeks of sprouting, I will feed them some nitrogen, okay? Oh, I got one done, guys. Okay, let's see. I can't reach that post, so I'm going to try up here. I have a hanger over here over the dryer, but I can't reach it without putting my hand on the dryer. So, so this is vlogging. I call it reality TV. Oh, wrong, wrong way. That's what I call it, reality TV. But this is what Lippy does. Like I said, y'all didn't see me make the bed, scrub toilets. Oh, I vacuumed. But y'all, my mornings start usually around 4 a.m. Now, I'm not doing the best job. Thank God these are just regular denim. So, whew. But the ironing, his work stuff, um, they've had to go to the cleaners. Which usually is about two pair a week, three pair, because then he just wears regular denim. Um, but if he's in meetings or in, in, in tops, they've been having to go to the cleaners. Because I'm just not able to work an iron. And Lord knows I don't want him working the iron. What did he do the other day? What? Oh, my word. Okay. This was... Oh, the chilly night. Okay. I said, I need you to grate my chili. Well, actually, um, I'm, I'm struggling with these overalls. Actually, I said, uh, when you get home, 
you gotta help me grate the chili. I mean, grate the cheese for the chili. He said, uh, okay. So he comes in and he got a little white bag with him. He'd stopped by the little Brookshire's. And uh, I said, what'd you get? He said, I got grated cheese. I said, I don't use grated cheese. Oh, I said, uh, you can just take that. It's a little old back. I said, you can take that to work and put it in the break room. So I wasn't paying much attention. I was talking to, I think I was talking to Lisa. Anyway, uh, I handed him my cheese grater. Now, I should have given him the box grater, okay? But no, I gave him my cheese grater. I've had for quite a few years, and you put the cheese in, and you do like that, or you know, vegetables, whatever. And I turned around and he's got it lifted up off the suction. He's looking at it. And I thought, I said, what's wrong? He said, it ain't coming out. So he gets a knife and he starts digging it. You know, it's supposed to be grated. It come up like a blob. I said, what did you do? I was just turning it. I said, which way was you turning it? I just kept turning I said, well, you got to turn and back it out to shoot the cheese out. Turn, back it out. Oh, y'all, we had a ball of cheese. All I needed was a little bit of cream cheese, maybe some onion chives, and I could have pressed it together. We'd have had the best cheese ball you ever seen. <laughs> he, he took a handful and said, clunk. Yeah. He belongs on the grill and outside. So... That was him with my cheese grater. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, it's still in the icebox in a little container. I'm going to do something with it. It's just a ball. So, all right, now I got to try to see how I'm holding these. I got to try to tote these to the closet. Give me a minute. I'll be right back. While we're in here, now see I have it on a number two. Let's check the roast. It's been going about an hour 15 minutes, hour and 20. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Now, I'm not going to fool with it. Let's see if I can turn it around. Oh, yeah. You see that? Look at all of that goodness right there. Well, we're going to let it go another hour before we start adding vegetables. Uh-oh, my straw is stuck. Got me some ice water. Got my hand all clean. Got this thing on and I fixed my lunch. It is pineapple, grapes, and a baby bell cheese. I learned how to unwrap them. I take a little paring knife and I kind of go down that paper and I'm able to get the paper off. And then the actual wax ring has this little catch so I can hold it right here and get halfway and then I can take the paring knife and finish cutting it. So I figured out how to get my baby bell cheese. So I'm gonna sit, eat my lunch. Let's see, what else do we have to do? I'm trying to think. Oh, you can bet I'll come up with something. Mondays is usually my long day, but I'm through with laundry. Floors, bathroom. Oh, by the time I do my lunch, I'll answer some more comments. Oh, and by the way, if I'm like two days late answering your comment, that's because I still can't get that phone in this hand. So I set it on my thigh and I punch with one finger and my hand gets a cramp. But I'm almost done. I think I am. I hadn't looked lately or since about seven this morning. So I'll just sit, answer comments, see if I have any emails. And I'm looking at the clock on the phone I'll probably meet y'all back here another hour and 15, 20 minutes, and we'll get the carrots and the potatoes in there. Ah, oh, that water's good. And I think I'm going to go ahead. It just depends on how much evaporates. Um, I may go ahead and do a slurry, but I'll, I'll show y'all that. And it's, like I said, no rice. I've got some crusty bread two loaves. I pulled one out of the freezer and I'll toast some of it and then I'll use it, like I said, for sub sandwiches with that meat because there won't be many vegetables. By the time we eat tonight and I eat just vegetables, 
tomorrow for lunch. Then I'll take that meat and shred it. Probably cut up some bell peppers, more onions, kind of just saute them. Provolone cheese and make like a roast beef sandwich. You know, a hot roast beef sandwich. And let me tell you, that gravy that's in there, if I have any leftover, I strain it, cool it down, and I put it in one of those containers. There's my Anjou for whatever we may want, you know. Um, that gravy, mm, we don't chunk it. I actually save it. And I can also use it if I want to make a shepherd's pie as my liquid and just thicken it if it's not quite thick enough. There's so much you can do with this gravy. And you saw how easy it is. The key to it is braising that meat. So, I'm going to eat my lunch. And I'll meet y'all back in a little while. Unless something else comes up, we may go feed the chickens a snack. You never know with Lippy. Okay, it's been another hour and a half. So, we are sitting about, let me see what time it is. We're at the two hour mark. Whoops. Now, I'm going to go from a two to about a four. I want to get some some uh, good boiling going. I want you to see this Anjou. There we go. But now I'm going to put in my carrots. This is just four carrots that I sliced, but I want them fairly thick. Now you could add anything if it's a root vegetable right now if you wanted to add broccoli and something i would do that maybe the last 20 minutes okay get these potatoes you noticed i didn't put many potatoes around here because we're going to have crusty bread but we do have the meat and the carrots i want this to come up to a light bowl before we turn it down we came to a good bowl i let it boil about a minute minute and a half Put the lid on and we're going to crank it back down to a number two. And we're going to walk away, check the potatoes in about 30 to 45 minutes. It's been about 45 minutes and I want to show y'all something. And that's a large potato. It goes in nicely, but it stays together. The carrot stays together. Let's get this little hole here. Let's move this. I'm working with one hand, guys. Hang on. I've got some cornstarch and cold water. I won't use all of this. I'm only going to use a little of it. And I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to continuously beat it around. Turn up a little heat, and it will thicken. Get that fat cap off. Look at that piece of meat. Now I'm going to let it sit here and simmer kind of hard. Uh, go ahead and make sure that cornstarch is cooking. There we go. Now that's going to shred like butter. Okay. Look at this big piece that come loose. I don't even think this will pick it up. See how it just shreds? All right, it's thickening. Let it go one more minute. And then I am going to turn the heat off, put the lid on, and supper's ready except for our crusty bread. But I'm going to go ahead and let it boil down like this a good minute, minute and a half, to ensure I get a good thickness. Lid on, stove off. So Buddy made it home. And I surprised him. And I was like, we got to get bricks. And then we come up with, why don't we use these uh, square tomato cages? And I did have to re-wet because uh, throughout the day, all this cardboard kind of set up, so I had to re-wet it. But, and this was, whose idea to use tomato cages, buddy? Oh, it was Lippy's. <laughs> A squirrel gets a nut every now and then. So see, that's going to work out great. Now, I will have to water these every day if the, Two or three times a day. Oh, yeah, if the paper keeps imagine. coming up. But it's all that we had. 
So there we go. I think we're set, <clears throat> y'all. Well, they sit out here, I may end up having to throw some shade cloth on if it gets too hot. Yeah. Because, I mean, this is, you're going to get all the midday morning sun, and then you won't get the evening sun. But no. you're going to get some real hot midday. Midday. If the temperature the stay up, do. yeah. Right now, they ain't been too bad, but. I told him I didn't dig the butterfly bush at one. I can't. Two, it kind of looks cute, but. Yeah. I think Buddy's going to end up digging it up. We'll see. Yeah. Somebody put it in a pot. Put it in it a It is greenhouse. pretty. It I'm is trying pretty. Trying to save all of them. I ain't got but about 50 of them right now. I'm trying to get them all, put them in a greenhouse, overwinter them. So. Because I'm going to tell spring, you. In spring, they'll be blowing and going. I'm going to tell you, we saw more this year, and it could be coincidence, but didn't we see more? Pollination with yeah. these butterfly this bushes. Is the old butterfly bush. Though. Yeah, that's the old ones. This is some of the old seeds. I don't remember where you got them from, but you got I them. I don't from remember somebody. where I got them. But I can tell you this. We've oh, got, I do too. I got, got that. Tons. I got the original plant in Wiggins, Mississippi. Okay, well. Three or four years it's ago. Not from Wiggins then, but I can tell you right now, I bet you I got 50 plants around here right now. Right. That was they the original one when I saw it, and Danny bought me and Wanda each one. Like it was by, little the droves and they spread everywhere so yeah i mean you can call them invasive but that's not invasive to me i can i can control that well see that's what i told them what a week ago to I mean, me it's it not be, invasive it i love be it invasive if you had it out in the field or something and you oh didn't yeah take care of it it would grow to man a jungle but yeah it'd be a pretty jungle yeah it would be and the stalks are not real tough so you could mow it down it wouldn't be no big deal right but it, it's done us very well like i said it could be coincidence all I know is that we've had more pollination since those have been in this garden. Now I gotta go get back on my lean too. Yeah. This is my bowl, guys. Got two potatoes, lots of carrots. Look at that anjou. Little piece of meat. But the star of the show is this crusty bread. Just break a piece off and sop that juice. It is the best thing ever. I'm fixing to fix Buddy's bowl and I gotta go get him off of a roof of some tin to tell him to come eat and then he can go finish up. It is getting even more overcast and it's 5.55. We always eat by six. I was hoping to bring him in, but I noticed he had one more piece of tin that he was getting up before he started cutting. So this is gonna be the window to tell him, okay, come eat. But I can't just end my first vlogging, if that's what you call it, this is gonna be hot. But I do want to sample this meat. This is what I want to show you. Can you see that? I mean, it's it's like butter. You, the the flavor is phenomenal. Like I said, the flavor is phenomenal. So I'm gonna go get him and leave a comment down in the description if this was something that turned out to be pretty good for my first time vlogging just a day in a life with lippy and buddy and if this turns out to be good i'm probably going to do a lot of filming on the weekends that way you guys can just watch us work and of course we'll fellowship with y'all i do have to look for these little mics because you're all not going to be able to hear us at a distance i mean but i do know how to zoom in to get us close <laughs> but i want to test something and see, because guys, I really didn't know the difference between any of this. You know, I'm learning. So just give me your honest opinion. I like having honesty, but it doesn't mean that we're not gonna cook and make a recipe or can and do a, you know, tutorial or instructional, but I do wanna incorporate Mr. Buddy as well. It's just hard to do except on the weekends. So this way I can follow him around. Y'all can follow us around because we really do work together majority of the time. Even with a bombed hand, I can still do some things. So leave your opinion, your honest review, should I say, not an opinion, just, just be delicate a little bit. <laughs> Down in the uh, comments, I'd really like to know y'all's thoughts. So as always, stay safe, stay well, and God bless. And I will see you on the next one.